Dear students, hello. Uh, this is Shaquille, and uh, today we are going to discuss a very important topic from A2 physics, which is magnetic fields. So in this particular video lecture, we are going to discuss following topics. Firstly, we will look upon the basics about magnetic field. Then we will look upon magnetic field pattern. Uh, then we'll look upon magnetic force on current carrying conductor placed inside magnetic field. Then we will discuss some technical terms related to magnetic magnetic field, that is magnetic flux and magnetic flux linkage, and along with magnetic flux density. And lastly, we will study current balance, which is a method to measure magnetic field strength. Well, talking about the syllabus outline for this, uh, well, um, the first topic is the basics about the magnetic field in which we will represent, we'll understand uh, uh, the concept behind the magnetic field produced by the permanent magnets and by the carrying conductors, and then we will represent magnetic field by field lines. So first of all, we study about field. Field is basically area, region, or volume of space around an object within which it can influence other objects. Like previously, we have studied two types of field. The first one is the gravitational field. The second one is electric field. So we are familiar with them. Uh, gravitational field is around the masses and it is only attractive and it is a weak field. Electric field is around the charges, of course. It can be attractive or repulsive and this field is relatively stronger as compared to gravitational field. About the magnetic field, well, it's the region around a magnet actually with an, ob an object having magnetic properties within which it can influence other magnetic objects or moving charges. So that area is known as magnetic field. Well, the properties are quite simple. Uh, the magnetic um, field can be attractive or repulsive, and it can be stronger or weaker depending upon particular magnet. Um, there are two types of magnetic fields. The one is due to the permanent magnet, and the second due to current flow in the conductor. How we represent magnetic field? Well, that is the similar way as we have represented the gravitational field lines and the electric field lines. So we use magnetic field lines to represent the magnetic field. Uh, what are magnetic field lines? Actually, the definition is, it is the path followed by a free to move north pole when placed inside a magnetic field. And that path is represented by magnetic field lines. Well, we have to look upon some magnetic field pattern. Uh, you know that we use a magnetic compass to sketch the magnetic field pattern around a magnet. And the compass is shown over there on the top right corner. Uh, it consists of uh, the magnetic compass consists of a tiny magnetic strip that is floating in some liquid and it is pivoted from its center. The red painted one is the North Pole and the other side of the strip is South Pole. So when you place this compass, magnetic compass in the magnetic field, it always point towards the magnetic field direction. Like in this case, assume that this is the uniform magnetic field due to Earth. So all the magnetic field lines are pointed to up to the, to the top of the page. So when you put the magnetic compass in it, the magnetic compass would be pointing towards the magnetic field line direction. So magnetic, a magnet have two poles, north and south, and the law of poles is a very familiar one, like like poles repel, unlike poles attract each other. About some magnetic field pattern, Let's say this is a bar magnet. So over there is, uh, let's say I have drawn a magnetic field pattern over there. So what are the features of this magnetic field pattern? Uh, the lines are always perpendicular to the magnet and none of the lines can intersect with each other and gap between the lines represent magnetic field strength. Direction of lines is always from north to south, like they leave the magnet from the north and they enter into the magnet from the south one. So force is always exerted from the poles. From the poles, like the, this north pole is going to exert the force 
Our south pole is going to exert the pole. The sides one would not be exerting any force. Like this side or this side of the bar magnet is not exerting any force. Okay, the next thing is there are two magnets which are placed side by side. And of course, like let's say this is north and this is south, this is north and this is south. So when you do that, the, the magnetic field pattern is as shown. We have to be looking at the magnetic field pattern in the middle of these two magnets, where both the lines due to both the magnets are moving in the same direction. So whenever any two magnetic field lines move in the same direction, they get closer to each other and vice versa. Like if the lines are moving in the same direction, they will get closer to each other. And if the lines are moving opposite to each other, then they will get far apart and the field will be weaker. Well, about the uniform magnetic field, let's say two poles are there, north and south. So the lines will be parallel and equally spaced, except for this edge effect lines. These edge effect lines, uh, well, these are originating from the edge of both the magnet. So they have to be perpendicular. That's why they are curved lines. Well, about the magnetic field uh, due to Earth, because we have to live for our lifetime on the Earth. So we have to know many things about the Earth and many things are, explore, are ex already explored. One of them is the Earth's magnetic field. So uh, you know that at the center of at the center of the earth, uh, there are like hot melted rocks in the core or center of the earth. And that is actually the main source of earth's magnetic field. As earth spin about its axis, so the lava or the uh, melted rocks uh, move. So hence they form conve convectional currents in the core. So due to these convectional currents, a huge magnetic field is produced around the earth. So this huge magnetic field is actually arising due to spinning of the Earth and due to production of the convectional currents in the curve. So these magnetic field lines around the Earth are very useful. One of them is like we use them as source of navigation and we use magnetic compass. We can uh, figure out their directions. And then it is a natural guard against harmful rays or charged particles entering the Earth's atmosphere from the outer space. Like whenever any harmful radiation or harmful charged particle will try to enter it, the magnetic field is going to change its path and hence they would be deflected into the atmosphere so they cannot reach to the Earth. So on Earth, all the living things can live peacefully. Well, about um, the magnetic field due to current flow in the conductor. So whenever current flow through the conductor, then it produces a magnetic field around it. So this is known as magnetic effect of current. So it was uh, it was Christian Orsted, uh, a physicist who, who explored or discovered this effect of uh, current in 1820. He learned that when the current flows through the wire, then uh, it produces magnetic field around it. And of course, if you put a compass around the wire, the compass would be deflecting. So hence it will, compass will indicate that there is current, uh, there is magnetic field present due to current. So uh, there is experimental setup to observe this magnetic effect of current. Let's say first, uh, this is positive and negative terminal of the battery and the wire is PQ. So of course, uh, the current is flowing from P to Q in the downward direction. This is situation A. And then you swipe the battery terminals and now the current is moving from uh, the opposite end. Okay, in normal circumstances, uh, if PQ is the wire and there is no current, so the magnetic compass is going to point towards uh, its north. But when you place that magnetic compass in uh, a different situation like in diagram A or in diagram B where the current direction is like opposite to each other, then the compass needle is going to deflect in opposite direction. So as both of these deflections are in opposite direction as compared to uh, the original direction, which was it towards north. So this will indicate, and this will be a strong evidence that whenever current flows through a wire, it produces a magnetic field around it. Okay, so uh, magnetic fields, uh, 
I met a few due to current challenges in life. It's the same thing, and uh, I have already explained this thing to you that uh, if a magnetic compass is placed near a conductor carrying current, the needle is deflected. This shows that conductor carrying current has a magnetic field around it. If the direction of the current is from north to south, like from you can say from north to south, the deflection of the magnetic needle is towards east. In the first diagram, in the if the direction of the current is from south to north, south to north in the second diagram, the deflection of needle is towards the west. So it is towards the west. The magnetic field around the current carrying conductor is in concentric circles. It can be observed by passing a current carrying straight conductor through a cardboard and sprinkling iron filings on it. So if you want to see the pattern, then what you do is you pass the wire through a cardboard and then you pass current through it and then you sprinkle the iron filings on it. So the iron filings will be in the form of concentric circles so that will indicate the possible pattern of magnetic field around current carrying wire. Well, now we have to look on 22.2, the next section, which is force on current carrying conductor. So we have to see that whenever you place a current carrying conductor in the magnetic field, it will experience a force, and the magnitude of that force is BIL sine theta, where B is magnetic flux density, I is current, L is the length of wire in the magnetic field, and theta is the angle between B and I. Then we have to use Fleming's left hand rule to identify the force direction. We have to study magnetic flux density in Tesla. And then we have to study about current balance. So this section is actually the most important section for uh, from magnetic fields. Okay, now let's look upon the effect of magnetic field on current carrying wire. Well, this is just an introductory paragraph, so let's just go through it. Electric energy is transmitted by the current, which is basically the flow of electrons, everyone knows that, which are the subparticles of the atom and are negatively charged. Well, uh, the movement of electrons from one location to another, power over lights, computer appliances, and many other things. Another fascinating effect about the electric current is that it produces its own magnetic field. Like this thing is interesting that the electric current produces its own magnetic field. So magnetism and electricity have a close relation in that closed loop currents generate their own magnetic fields and magnetic field acting on the closed loop circuits may produce current. So it's vice versa thing. Like magnetic field can produce current and current can produce magnetic field. And all this was discovered by Henry Ostrich in 1820. Okay, so now we have to see What's the reason of force? Like when you put a current carrying wire inside a magnetic field, so why the force acts? So here is a diagram, north and south pole are there and the current is flowing from P to Q. So you know that the magnetic field is always from north to south. So magnetic field is acting in downward direction like this and current is moving to your right. So magnetic field is downward and current is moving to your right such that the angle between them is 90 degree. So now, what's the reason? The reason is like this wire PQ is going to experience a force. And the reason is there are two types of magnetic fields. One is due to uh, like north and south pole, which is something where to be downward. And the other one is due to flow of current in the wire. So when these two fields will interact with each other, so they will create strong and weak field region around the wire. And hence the force acts on the wire from stronger field towards the weaker field. Well, if there is no current in the wire and you put that in the magnetic field, force, no magnetic force act. But if the current is moving from P to Q, the wire moves into the screen. And if you change the current such that it is flowing from Q to P, then the wire is moving out of the screen. Well, I'm talking about this. This is P and this is Q. So if you reverse the direction of the current in the wire, the force direction is going to reverse. Well, what's the reason of the force? I already told you that magnetic force acting on the wire is due to interaction of the fields. One due to current in the wire and second due to the magnetic poles. Well, we have to look upon the direction of the magnetic force. So for that, we use a famous rule, which is Fleming's left-hand rule. It is left, L-E-F-T, left, and F for force, 
That's why we use Fleming's left hand rule to determine the direction of force on current carrying conductor. So, well, let's see how we will apply Fleming's left hand rule. Uh, well, uh, of course, we have to use our left hand as like this is the left hand. And then we use thumb, like we use thumb. We use first finger, which is the first finger, and we use second finger, so this is the second finger. Uh, so these are used. What you have to do is step by step. First of all, you have to point your first finger in the direction of the magnetic field. So the magnetic field is from north to south, which is represented by B. So you have to point your first finger towards it. Then you have to point your second finger towards flow of current as the current is flowing in the rod. So you have to point your finger to that. And remember, this is a conventional current. Okay, then uh, the thumb, the thumb will automatically point itself towards the force direction. So it is actually F, B, I. F is the force which thumb will point towards. B is the magnetic field. Like you will point your first finger towards magnetic field and you will point your second finger towards direction of the current. That's how you apply Fleming's left hand rule. And keeping in mind your uh, like the angle between all of them should be 90 degrees. Okay, so let's do this example over here. Um, well, there is a uniform magnetic field which is pointing into the plane of spin. So the P is cross, cross means uniform magnetic field pointing into the plane of the screen. And then the blue one is the rod in which current is flowing in downward direction. This is the conventional current. So what should be the force direction? So you will be applying Fleming's left hand rule on it. So Fleming's left hand rule, you have to hold your left hand, point the first finger into the screen because the crosses are in two. You have to point it towards the magnetic field and point your second finger along the blue vector, a blue line such that it is pointing uh, towards the bottom of this of your laptop screen. And then the thumb will point towards your right. So it means that the force will be acting towards the right side and the conductor will be start moving towards right. Okay, in the second example, if you look on the second example, like this is the North Pole, this is the South Pole. And then there is a current carrying wire in which current is moving out of the plane of screen, like the current is moving towards you. And you have to sketch, uh, you have to tell the direction of the force. So the magnetic field is always from north to south and current is moving towards you. So point your first finger from north to south of left hand and point second finger towards you. And then of course the thumb is going to be pointed in upward direction. So this is the direction in which the magnetic force is acting on this wire. Well, the next important thing is the size of the force or factors of this magnetic force. Well, the, the quantities that can affect the size of the magnetic force on current carrying conductor are like the first quantity is the current and current in the wire is directly proportional to the force. Greater the current, greater would be the force. Second is the length of the conductor inside the field. The third one is, of course, the strength of magnetic field. Stronger field means stronger force. And the last one is sine theta. So where theta is the angle between magnetic field and current direction. So combining all of them, F equals B I L sine theta. Where B is the magnetic field strength, I is the current in that conductor, L is the length of conductor inside the field, and theta is the angle between magnetic field and the current direction. Okay, the next thing is, uh, how the force can be maximum. So this force can be maximum if theta is 90 because sine 90 is one. So if B and I are perpendicular to each other, only then you can get maximum force, it will be I out. Minimum force, well, when theta is zero because sine zero is zero, it means that when magnetic field and current are parallel to each other, then uh, the minimum force is zero. So if the angle is between zero and 90 degree, like if theta is more than zero or less than 90, then magnetic force acting on the current carrying conductor can be determined by this equation, which is magnetic force equals PIL sine theta. So you have to use the value of angle over there. 
Okay, so now we have to move to the new topic, which is magnetic flux. Flux, well, flux is actually the group or bunch of the magnetic field lines. Okay, so it's symbol is phi. So what flux means is, it is actually the group or bunch of field lines. And magnetic flux is the number of magnetic field lines penetrating to a specific area. So it's actually the number of magnetic field lines. How do we define it? It is the product of magnetic field strength and perpendicular area to which it can get is known as magnetic flux. So magnetic flux phi equals magnetic field strength and perpendicular area, or it is phi equal B A or S theta. Well, B is magnetic field strength and A is area, and theta is the angle between area vector and magnetic field strength. So like over here, you have to see that if let's say, if let's say this is this is the area, and then this red one is the area vector, the you know, area vector is always perpendicular to the surface. So B, are, B is the magnetic field, which is the parallel lines passing through this area. So if the angle is zero degree between B and area vector, it means the phi will be maximum. And if the angle is 90 degrees, it means the phi will be minimum. Well, the SI unit of magnetic flux is Weber, named after the scientist. Well, for phi, it is Weber, for B, it is Tesla, and for A, it is meter square. It means that Weber equals Tesla into meter square. So we can define it as one Weber is the amount of magnetic flux when one Tesla of magnetic field strength links perpendicular area of one meter square. Well, so, well this magnetic flux is actually a scalar quantity. And um, since it is just the number of magnetic field lines that penetrates through the surface. So we need not to bother about the direction of the magnetic field lines. Okay, the next term is magnetic flux linkage. The linkage word is added over there. Uh, it is used for basically coils when the magnetic field line is linking a uh, number of coils a uh, number of some number of loops in the coil, then we say that this is magnetic flux linkage. So the number of magnetic field lines linking a coil of wire perpendicular is known as magnetic flux linkage. The formula is same, dA cos theta, but you just add n over there. Here n is the number of the coils or the loops to which the magnetic field lines are passing. And uh, of course, if theta is zero over here, then you will get the maximum flux linkage, which is NBA. Okay. Then the next thing is magnetic field strength. This is very important. Uh, uh, magnetic flux density is actually the same thing. So it's similar to gravitational field strength, which was T, or similar to electric field strength, which was denoted by E. So uh, we define it as magnetic flux per unit perpendicular area. Magnetic flux per unit perpendicular area, since phi is BA and B will be phi by A. So magnetic field strength is magnetic flux per unit air perpendicular area. Or there's a second definition as well. It is a magnetic force acting per unit length, carrying a unit current and held perpendicular to the magnetic field. And actually this comes from this equation. Magnetic force is BIL and B is FM over IL. So that's why we say that magnetic field strength is defined as magnetic force acting per unit length of wire carrying unit current. And of course held perpendicular to the magnetic field. Uh, well, the unit of magnetic field strength is Tesla. These days Tesla is very famous. Uh, Tesla is like a leading car comp manufacturing company. It's a leading private um, uh, jet company. And in future, it will be a leading mobile phone company as well. So, but this Tesla is different. The Tesla in physics is equal to Weber per meter square, or Tesla equals to Newton per ampere per meter. So Tesla, uh, well, the B, which is magnetic flux density, is a vector quantity, and its direction is same as the direction of magnetic field lines. 
So we have to do something with the Tesla now. Tesla is the unit of magnetic flux density. And uh, Tesla equals Weber per meter square as V is pi over A. And Tesla equals Newton over ampere into meter as V is F over IL. So we define Tesla by two ways. One Tesla is the amount of magnetic field strength and one Weber of magnetic flux links perpendicularly to the area of one meter square or the second definition um, is one Tesla is the amount of magnetic field strength when a wire carrying one ampere current experiences the force of one Newton per meter while being perpendicular to the magnetic field. So this definition is very important. Okay, now we have to look on a last thing which is current balance. Current balance is actually a method used to measure magnetic field strength at a specific point. For example, you have a magnet and you have a, let's say, a horseshoe magnet. Like a horseshoe magnet. This is north and this is south. And in between it, at this point, you need to find its magnetic field strength. So there is a method which is known as current balance method. And this method can be used to measure magnetic field strength at any point inside a magnetic field. Well, the working is, we know that the magnetic force on current carrying wire is Fm is Bil sine theta. From here, we can make B as the subject, which is magnetic field strength, which we have to determine. It is magnetic force divided by Il sine theta. So you know that I is current, which can easily be measured. L is length of the wire inside the magnetic field. And sine theta, theta is the angle between B and I. Uh, so what we have to do is, we have to measure actually the magnetic force happening on the current carrying wire place inside the magnetic field. And that can be used to find the magnetic field strength. Well, this magnetic force is measured by placing a current carrying wire inside that magnetic field. And current in the wire and its length in the magnetic field would already be given. So how to measure magnetic force? This is a big question. Um, well, first of all, you have to place a U-shaped magnet on electronic balance. Take electronic balance and put a U-shaped magnet on top of it. Then you measure its weight, or you can set the balance to zero reading. And then after that, you place a wire inside the poles without any contact with the poles. Okay, next, uh, like you can see in the diagram, uh, this is the balance, and then north and south pole, this is the U-shaped magnet which is placed, and then there is a wire which is like X, Y is the wire, which is connected with the ammeter and the switch and the battery. And the length of the wire or the length of the poles are already given. Okay, so what you'll do is you'll switch on the current in the wire. And then the wire, which in this case is X, Y, will experience a force. And you will be using Fleming's left hand rule to measure the direction or to find the direction of this force on the wire. So when you apply Fleming's left hand rule, on this uh, diagram, you can see that uh, the magnetic field is from north to south. So point your first finger towards this arrow direction, and then point your second finger from X to Y, which is like the current direction. So you have to point your second finger of left hand towards it. And then you will see clearly that your thumb will be pointing upward. It means the magnetic force on the wire is acting in the upward direction. So, as the force on the wire is in upward direction, but according to Newton's third law of motion, a reactional force will act on the magnetic poles in downward direction because every action has an equal but oppositely directed reaction. So this wire is going to exert a force on the poles. So this wire exert a force on the poles. So as the force is exerted on the pole, so the balance reading is going to change because you, because something is pushing the magnet downward, so this will increase the force reading on the balance. So the magnetic force on the wire, how much is the magnetic force on the wire? That can be determined by, by finding this change in balance reading, like when current was off and when current was on. So you have to find, you have to subtract the balance reading. So it's actually magnetic force equal balance reading with the current through the wire and balance reading without current through the wire. That will give you the amount of magnetic force on the wire. Okay, so you will use B equal Fm over Il sine theta. So Fm you have measured from 
the previous method. I is the current, L is the length of the wire inside the poles. So that's how you can find magnetic field strength. Well, let's solve this example here. Uh, figure shows um, a rigid straight metal wire XY. And this is uh, connected with the ammeter and switch and a battery, and it is passing through a U-shaped magnetic poles. And when that magnet is placed on the uh, electronic balance, the reading is 2.5 Newton, right? So what will happen is when you will close the switch, so current will start moving through the wire, and the balance reading will reduce to 2.45. So what you'll do is you have to find the magnetic field strength between the poles. So what you'll do is we'll say that as the magnetic force on the wire is downward by using Fleming's left hand rule. So you will use Fleming's left hand rule over here. So you will clearly see that, um, well, let's say this is North Pole, this is South Pole. So the magnetic field is this way. So first finger towards this. And the second finger is like downward. Um, no, it's, it's actually the opposite thing. Um, the, magnetic, uh, the magnetic field strength is actually the opposite way. It's the other way. Like it's not this way, it's this way. So now, and of course, this is not north now. This is south and this is north. So now you can see that when you use Fleming's left and rule over here. So the force on this wire is acting in downward direction. So this is force on wire. So of course, the wire is going to exert a force in upward direction on magnet. So this is force on magnet, which is in upward direction. So when the wire pulls the magnet upward, so of course the balance reading is going to decrease. That's why it decreases from 2.5 to 2.45. So now, you can see that as magnetic force on the wire is in downward direction, so the force on magnet will be in upward direction. This will decrease the reading on the balance. So now B is F over IL as theta is 90 degree. So F is like the difference between the two readings, 2.50 minus 2.45, because initially the weight of the magnet was 2.5 Newton. And when you put the wire and when you flow current through it, so the reading was reduced to 2.45. It means the magnetic force is always the difference between these two readings, which is 0.05. And then you convert current and length into SI units. So the magnetic field strength due to these poles comes out to be 20 Tesla. Well, let's solve some past paper questions. And again, it's from the current balance. A large horseshoe magnet produces a uniform magnetic field of flux density B between its pole. Outside the region of the pole, the flux density is zero. The magnet is placed on a top pen balance and a stiff wire XY is situated between the poles as shown in the figure. So this is the electronic balance. This is the horseshoe magnet and this is the wire XY and between that. The wire XY is horizontal and normal to the magnetic field. The length of the wire between the poles is 4.4 cm. So it means that the length is 4.4 cm. Um, a direct current of magnitude 2.6 ampere, so the current is 2.6 ampere, is passed through the wire in the direction from x to y. From x to y, okay, the current is moving that way. The reading on the top end balance increases by 2.3 gram. So the reading increases by 2.3 gram. State and explain the polarity of the pole P of the magnet. So now we have to tell that this, whether this pole P is north or south pole. So since the reading is increased, it means that the force on the magnet is in downward direction because only then the reading can increase. It also means that the force on wire should be an upward direction on wire. So now you will use Fleming's left hand rule. So you have to point your first finger towards the uh, magnetic field, but as you don't know, so just leave it over there. Uh, the next thing is the force on wire is in an upward direction. So point your thumb upwards, right? Point your thumb upwards. Um, upwards means that 
as the wire as the force on the wire is in upper direction now so your thumb should be in upper direction okay and then the current is from y x to y and then your first finger is pointing from your right to left so it means that this p is north pole and this is south pole so state we will say that it is north pole and then we will say that how it is north pole we have to explain because this is a three mark question so we have to tell everything over there so we will say that it's north pole how uh, because as reading on balance increases this shows force on wire is in upward direction because you know look when the reading increases it means the force on magnet is in downward direction it also means the uh, the reactional force would be on force on wire which will be opposite to that so which will be in upward direction okay and then using fleming's left hand rule pole p is identified okay the next question is you have to calculate the magnetic flux density between the poles like you have to find b so you say okay b is magnetic force over i l and magnetic force is actually change in reading change in reading change in reading over i into l so how much is the changing reading it is actually how much is the change in reading let's see it is 2.3 gram so 2.3 into 10 to the power minus 3 in order to convert it into kilogram into 9.81 and then at place of i and l you have to put their respective current and length values so the current value is 2.6 and the length of the pole is given 4.4 so it is 4.4 into 10 to the power minus 2 so you'll solve it to get the answer okay uh well this is the next question but you have to try it uh yourself it's a simple question try it yourself try it yourself well again this is the question but you have to try it yourself so try these questions yourself and in case you find anything difficult you can consult me in the comment box so students our next video lecture would be about hall clock a very important device used to measure magnetic field strength directly and we will also look upon charged particles movement inside magnetic field so these would be our next video lectures until then take care goodbye